Romans chapter 1, starting in verse 1. Paul, a bondservant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated to the gospel of God, which he promised before through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, concerning his son Jesus Christ, our Lord, who was born of the seed of David according to the flesh, and declared to be the Son of God with power according to the Spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. Through him we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name, among whom ye also are the called of Jesus Christ. Through him we have received to all who are in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, if you're asked the question, who are you, what would your answer be? How would you answer that question? You know, Many times when we're asked who we are, our answer is something like this. Well, I was a school teacher for many years. Now I'm a bus driver. You ever thought about that? When somebody asks you who you are, how do you answer? Do we answer, do we identify ourselves by our profession or do we figure out who we are? We need to understand who we are in order to fulfill our purpose in life. If we don't know who we are, we won't know what we're doing. We won't know how to fulfill that purpose. Many times, we, as I said, we define ourselves by our occupation and not really by who we are. Um, we, we, may, we have an occupation, we have to earn a living, but that's not who we are in life. Paul addressed the people here in Rome when he began to uh, uh, this introduction that he had. And I could have used other scriptures because Paul used a, a similar introduction in many of his writings. But he, he addressed the people in Rome as the beloved of God. In 2 Peter 3 and 14, Peter writes these words, Therefore, beloved, looking forward to these things, be diligent to be found by Him in peace, without spot, and blameless. We find that phrase in the Bible, the beloved of God, over 100 times. And I looked it up in several different translations. The New King James, which I uh, normally read from, uh, it's found 114 times. I think in the King James, it was one less. It was 113 times. But most translations had that phrase, the beloved of God, over 100 times that it appeared. That's who we are. We are the beloved of God. That word beloved comes from the Greek word agape, which I'm sure you've probably all heard of or be familiar with. It's that, it's that love that God declares for us. It's an unconditional love. You know, unfortunately, we often love people with what the Bible says is a filio love. It's a brotherly love. It's a conditional love. I love you as long as you love me. I love you because you do good things for me. I love you because you help me. I love you because you're kind to me. And if any of those things stop, my love for you will probably stop as well. That, that's a, a worldly and earthly love. It's a conditional love. And that's not the love we should have for one another. And that's not the love that God has for us. He has this agape love. This love that never ends. God doesn't love us because we love Him. In fact, the Bible says that God loves us first. 
That's why we love God because He first loved us. He doesn't love us because we're just like Him because there's none of us that are just like God. God doesn't love us because uh, of something we've done or something, who we are. God loves us because of who He is. He is love. And so He calls us the beloved of God. In verse 6, Paul tells us that we are called of Jesus Christ, called to be saints. Do you consider yourself to be a saint? You know, we, we hear the phrase many times, many, many Christian people, they go around and, and, and you talk to them about uh, who they are and how they're living and things. And we, we use it for an excuse. Well, I live in the flesh, you know, I'm just a sinner saved by grace. That is not true. I was a sinner and I have been saved by grace. But the Word of God says I am now a saint. Amen. Because I have been saved by grace. Yes. You know, uh, the, the word saint in the Greek means uh, uh, physically, morally, blameless, and pure. It means uh, consecrated, set apart for a common purpose. We have been set apart by God to do His work. Who we are is a saint. We are a saint of God. The word where he said you are called to be a saint. Uh, the word called in the Greek language literally means a personal invitation. You realize that you are personally called by God? There's not a one of us here that can claim to be a Christian because we chose God. Sure. We're a Christian because God chose us. Yeah. If the Holy Spirit had not convicted your heart, if He had not drawn you to God... You wouldn't come to God. Right. We don't come to God. No offense to anyone because it put us all in the same boat. We're not smart enough on our own to realize we need God. Right. That we need a personal Savior. But God calls us and He draws us to Himself by His Holy Spirit. And so we come to Him because He has chosen us. He personally called each one of us to think that God, the Creator of, the, of life, the Creator of this universe personally called you and I to Himself. He invited us to come. You know, uh, uh, President, he's, for some reason, I don't really understand it, he's never invited me to the White House. Not one of them since I've been living has invited me to come to his house. Don't understand it at all. But God called me. He invited me to come to his house. Amen. He invited me to come to life. Paul used this word in, in these scriptures that we read three different times in three different locations here in the book of Romans. He, he used this phrase that you are the called of God. You have been called by God. But we realize that we have been called by God. He has chosen us. Now, that's who we are. We are the beloved of God. We are a saint of God. And we need to understand that and we need to accept that identity to fulfill. If, if I don't realize I have been called of God, that's who I am, then I'm not going to fulfill the purpose that God has for my life. Because in the introduction, when Paul introduced himself, he introduced himself as a bondservant. The King James says as a, 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 a servant. Uh, some translations use the word slave. And in the Greek language, that word does literally mean a slave. You, you might think, well, being a slave, that, that's not a, a, a good thing. But, but Paul realized <clears throat> that, and the reason that he would call himself a bondservant is not because he was a slave in, in, the, in the nature that we think of slavery, but he was a slave in the fact that he realized that he had been purchased. 1 Corinthians, he wrote to the church of Corinth. He said, For you're bought with a price, therefore, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. He also wrote, You are bought with a price, do not become slaves of men. I, I thought about when I was thinking about this uh, uh, scripture and about how we have been purchased by God. I couldn't help but think of the story uh, of Hosea. He was a prophet. 
prophet of God and he, he, he was faithful to God. He did what God asked him to do. And he was a single man. Uh, and all of a sudden, God, later in life, God told him, He said, I want you to get married. He said, I want you to go out and find yourself a bride. And, and you know, think about this, <clears throat> particularly men. If you were going out and find a bride, hopefully you would go to a church to find a bride. You, you would go out and find someone that, that would be compatible with you as a Christian. But God told us that. He said, what I want you to do is He said, I want you to go down to the red light district and I want you to find a woman on the street and I want you to take her as your wife. He said, the Bible said, the King James says, I want you to go into the whoredoms of this world and take a wife. Now that seems like a strange request for God to make of, of a man. Particularly a man of God, a prophet. But he was obedient. He did what? God asked him to do. And things went along fairly well, but I guess after a while, after they had a couple children and she had become a, a housewife and, and doing the things that a wife should do, that she got tired of it. And she went back to her old way of life. But it turned out that her old way of life wasn't really compatible with her anymore and her... Um, Master on the street wasn't too fond of her anymore. And so he put her on an auction block to auction her off. And so as she's there being auctioned off, somebody in the crowd begins to be. Maybe she's thinking, feeling rejected and, and, and low and bad about herself. You know, maybe her life wasn't too bad at home. And, and, and you know, I've chose to go back to the old life and... But it just didn't work out. And all of a sudden somebody begins to bid. And the bidding maybe went back and forth a little bit. Finally the bidding reached a price. And she looked down in the crowd. And it was Hosea. It was her husband who had purchased her back. The reason God had Hosea do this, take the wife from the whoredoms of this world and then allowed her to go back into the world and then had Hosea go back is to be an example to show us what He has done for each one of us. We were created in a likeness of God's own image. And yet we've all seen and fell short of the glory of God. But God purchased each one of us yes. from the slave block of sin. Amen. And He redeemed us unto Himself. Peter said, Knowing that you were not re redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold, from the aimless conduct received by traditions from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as a lamb without blemish, and without spot, we have been redeemed by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. The word redeemed means something that is loosened or set free by a redemptive price. A price was paid for our lives. And that's why we should realize that we should consider ourselves to be slaves or servants or bond servants of Jesus Christ. We need to ask ourselves as we look at our life and realize that you and I were purchased, we were bought back from the, the from sin that we were bound in. We were a slave to sin. And we have been purchased by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Are we willing to accept the call that God has placed upon our life to become a bond servant? said, in the beginning, I ask the question, who are you? Again, we need to realize that we are the called of God. We are the beloved of God. And when we recognize that who we are in Christ Jesus, we need to ask ourselves, are we fulfilling the purpose that God has called us into? Are we willing to accept that 
job, that calling of being a bond servant. Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, he said, Therefore, whether you eat or drink, whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. The phrase, the glory of God, appears over 300 times in the Bible. Does your life glorify God? What you're doing in life, what fulfilling the purpose that God has called you into, are you fulfilling that and honoring and glorifying God? The only way we can truly honor Him is to fulfill the purpose that He has called us into, the purpose that He has given us. The word glorified means to praise, to magnify, to honor. Is your life honoring God? And that's not sitting in church on Sunday morning. That's going to work on Monday morning. That's, that's living your life day in and day out. Are we doing what God has called us to do? Paul wrote in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 10. He said, Your witnesses, and God also, how devoutly and justly and blamelessly we behave ourselves among you who believe. As you know how we exhorted and comforted and, and charged every one of you, as a father does his own children, that you should walk worthy of God who called you into his own kingdom and glory. That's what Paul said. He said, you're a witness. You're a witness of me. Uh, of how I've walked. I've walked devoutly. I've walked justly. I've walked blamelessly. We've behaved ourselves. Can we say that among the people who look at our lives? The people that we live among. The people we work among. Do they see us living a blameless life before God? Are you glad that people are watching your life? And as a Christian, when you profess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life, people are watching your life. Are you living that life? He said, He's charged every one of us as, as a father does his own children. Think about your children. When your children go to school, when they go out in public, when they go out somewhere and go to a friend's, how do you want them to behave? How many of you want to behave like little heathens? We, we want them to behave properly. We want them to, to, to realize that, that when they go out, they're representing us as a family. And that's what God wants out of our lives. That you should walk worthy of God who's called you into His own kingdom and glory. Are you walking worthy of His calling? First off, do you know who you are? Do you recognize who you are in Christ Jesus? And are you fulfilling that purpose, honoring Him and glorifying Him with your life? Okay? Let's pray. Father, we do thank You this morning for another opportunity, Father, to share Your Word. And Father, we thank You that You called us to be Your children, that You invited us into Your family, that you provided a way that, Father, we can escape this life and eternal separation from you. And that we can live in your kingdom for all eternity. And Father, we pray that you will help us this morning to realize just exactly who we are. We're one of the king's kids. We're one of your children. We thank you for that and we praise you for that. And Father, we pray that our life does honor you and bring glory and honor to you in everything that we say and do in our daily lives. May our lives lift up Jesus Christ and may people see Him living in us that you'll be honored and glorified. Father, we pray again that you minister to every need that's represented here this morning. Touch hearts and lives, Father God, as only you can do. Draw each one of us closer to you. Most of all, Father, we pray if there's one present today it's never repented of their sins and received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of the life. Today, Father, they'll realize that you're calling. You're standing at their heart's door knocking. They must open up and allow you to 
invite you to come in. Father, minister again to each one. Draw us each closer to you. As always, Father, we'll give you the praise, the glory, and the honor for it all. For we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. I ask you to stand with me this morning as always as we close with the song.